Hey guys, so Prisma recently released some new things that I'm really excited about and one of the big things is Postgres SQL support. So you can now use that database with Prisma and you can also use your own database. And so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to show you how to set up Prisma running on your own Postgres SQL database and in this case it's going to be running locally on uh, our computers. So to do this, we're gonna be following this guide right here. And we're gonna do a few modifications to this to get this to work. And I'll put this link in the description below if you wanna follow along. But first off, um, you need to make sure you have Docker uh, Postgres and also Docker Compose on your computer. That's pretty much the first steps right here. And if you're not sure, what you can do is go into terminal and just type docker-v to see what you have. I'm running on docker 18.03 and then docker compose. And then also you wanna make sure you have Postgres up and running. Um, I don't know if I can do dash v, it is that. All right, so I'm on Postgres 10.4 right now. Okay, and then after that, you wanna also make sure you have Prisma and you have the latest version of Prisma. So as this says right here, you can run npm install dash g Prisma, and then this will uh, give you the Prisma CLI. So Prisma dash v, we can see the version hopefully. So I'm on version 1.8.3. All right, so here's where we're gonna start doing stuff. So first thing, we're gonna create a folder um, to get this started. So I'm gonna make a folder called example. And I'm just gonna move into that folder and then I'm gonna touch a file called docker compose.yaml. And then I'm gonna open up the docker compose.yaml. So this is defining uh, basically the attributes for docker compose. And we're just gonna copy this bit right here. So here is the configuration file for how Prisma should start. So Prisma is actually just a Docker image. That's Prisma right there. And we're specifying that we want to run the Prisma server. And then here we can specify all the details for it. Um, so first off, we have some volumes at the bottom. You don't need these. We can just remove that. Um, and then right here, this is for securing your cluster with a password. We're not going to worry about that for now, so we can just remove this comment. Here's the port that uh, Prisma is going to be running on, the Prisma server. And then here you can specify the database. So here we want a Postgres database. And we specify the host, the port, the username, password, all that good stuff. So you need to have a user for your Postgres instance. We're going to be using the one on our computer. If you don't know how to do this, I'll link a, uh, something in the description below for how to create a user. Um, I believe the default user though is Postgres, Postgres for the username and password, or at least I have this user set up on mine. And then the port, the default port for Postgres is 5432. And then for host, you would think we'd wanna put localhost here, but this runs in Docker, and Docker cannot access localhost directly. There is a good Stack Overflow about this if you want to read this. Uh, we're currently on the latest version of Docker, or at least I am. I'm using 18.03. So I can use this special thing instead of localhost, which is host.docker.internal. And uh, that works and is able to connect to localhost on my computer. So I'm going to be using that. All right. so. After we set that up, we can go ahead and run docker compose up and it's going to uh, start Postgres, um, it's going to start the Prisma server and connect to our Postgres instance. Um, there's one last thing we really want to add to this though and that's the name of our database. So they didn't add that but we can just say database under here and we can put a name so I'm going to call this Prisma and I'm just going to save and get out of here. All right, so now I can run docker compose up, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna create that Prisma database and start up the server. Now, if we wanted to, we could also just do create db and then do uh, Prisma to create the database ourselves, but Prisma will handle this, so we don't even have to worry about that. So docker compose up, and uh, we can see all this stuff here. 
and uh, I'm currently running it um, in the foreground if you wanted to you could run this in the background using the dash D flag I wanted to see all the logs for this so I, I didn't add that so we can see if you get something that looks like this that means you were able to successfully start the server and it connected to your database alright um, and we can see this now if I do PC equal Prisma um, it doesn't have any relations in it right now because it's totally empty um, or at least that's what you may think um, but we'll, we'll discuss this more a little bit later um, but now you can open up a new terminal tab or a new terminal itself and uh, we're going to specify what should be in our database so there's two files we need for this uh, we need to create a prisma.yaml and a data model.graphql so we can touch both of these and we'll open up prisma.yaml first and we'll copy these things right here so the first thing is the endpoint this is where our prisma server is running so remember how we specified port 4466 in the uh, docker compose well we're using that same port here because that's where it's located at and then the data model is the file where you have your database model so they're specifying put it in data model.graphql so that's why we have data model.graphql right here and this is where we specify what we want our database to look like so in this case we want to create a type called user and uh, ID name string so you can put all your definitions here for Prisma and then after that we can just run Prisma deploy so what that will do is it'll go ahead and push the user table that we just created or user type and uh, we can see the changes we just made to our Postgres database now if we want to we can go to localhost uh, 4466 and we can actually access this instance that we created now we didn't specify a password so we should be able to just access this we can see our schema we can see we just have a user so if I wanted to I could for example create a user and let's say the name I'm gonna say user1 and I want to see the name and the ID okay so I was able to successfully create this user right here and now you may be thinking alright I can now just connect with for example psql as we are here so psql will allow you to connect to Postgres or uh, any any tool you have connect to the Prisma oops, Prisma database and I'd be able to uh, backslash D shows you all the tables and whatnot or relations and you're like well what happened there are no tables at least that's what happened to me I was like uh, is Prisma not using this database I don't see anything here and I was so uh, surprised by this so what I did is I said select all from and I just hit tab a few times um, and I noticed there was like these weird tables right here um, that were I guess kind of hidden and the one that was most interesting to me is this default star default so I typed that out and then I tried tabbing and I got nothing and I wasn't really sure what to type here so I kind of was at stuck so what I usually do when I need to do more advanced SQL stuff um, or more advanced statements or see all the database and whatnot I use a GUI tool and the one that I like the best is called data grip unfortunately it is not free you can get a free trial and they also have it free for students which is why I'm able to use it but it's really nice it has a TeleJ uh, backing to it it's made by JetBrains and it has really nice uh, auto completion which I really like okay so I open that up and we can create a connection um, to the database and we just change this to uh, Prisma oops not the name there the host the host is localhost database name is Prisma okay um, and if we get the second, this a second to actually connect to the database and whatnot. Um, so by default, these tables are basically hidden. All you see is this one called public, but there's this number here called one of eight. If I click on that, I see my database server called Prisma. I click on all schemas. I can now see all of them. And the one I'm interested in is this default, a dollar sign default. And inside of there is tables and I can see the thing that I care about which is that user table I created 
and now I can see all these things in here. So I can reference this. So for example, select all from, and I can do the default. And now I know what I need to type, dot user, and I can do dot, or just from that I can query it. And we can see now all the fields ID created at name user one. And this is actually what I was selecting or the attributes that I gave it when I created it. Now we can do the same thing from the command line now that I know what to type. So select all from default user. Oops. And we can see that here. So by default, it puts it in this, uh, I guess, schema called default dollar sign default. So that, that was a little tricky at first, I didn't realize. Um, but I have this Prisma database and inside of it there is this, I guess schema is the best name for it, called default uh, dollar sign default, which stores all the tables that you create when you create stuff in Prisma. So now I have direct access to this database and I can do whatever I want with these tables and whatnot, which we'll talk more about in a future video but I hope this gives you an idea of how you can connect to a local instance of PostgreSQL on your computer and actually see the table and see the users and whatnot that you create. Um, I'm not sure why they set it up in this way. It's a little bit um, weird to actually be, try to find the data. And I'm sure there's probably a way to customize this or customize that uh, to be able to find it. And maybe there's a, a better tool than a data grip to discover this as well. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.